Hello, thank you for joining me for my first Adobe Premiere walkthrough video. I'm going to address a couple of questions I had from the community on how to accomplish a few tasks, as well as a setting in Adobe that I found to be very helpful, Adobe Premiere that is. Uh, so the setting I'm gonna talk about is proxies and how they're helpful and why they're something you should probably consider using. And then some of the benefits that I have found uh, while using proxies that aren't necessarily intended, but they're really great. And I'm very glad that I found that. Uh, and then we're going to talk about the color correction of videos, uh, and then also how to add audio tracks and um, do some transitions with video and audio tracks to help mix things and make stuff a little nicer for starting and stopping. Uh, so we will jump directly into that. All right. And then I'm going to turn my studio lights down because I don't need it super bright when you're not looking at me. There we go. Okay. So I have created a demo project to show what it looks like to have a video file imported without proxies enabled and what kind of performance you get while seeking. And I think this is more of a problem when you have uh, 4K files at 30 frames or 60 frames a second just because of how much data is there. Uh, so without proxies, when we seek, uh, the seeking is a little bit chunky and a little bit jerky. And it's not great to work in. Um, and proxies can help us with that. Uh, so what proxies do is uh, when you enable proxies on a project, and then also there's a setting inside Adobe Premiere that needs to be enabled as well, uh, but when you bring a file in and drop it, it will ingest that file and then it'll transcode it into a lower resolution proxy. Uh, and that does create a new file, so it will consume more space in the hard drive. So just be aware of that fact that you need to have a little extra space to do this. Uh, but then the proxy file is what you get to see here in the preview and it makes it a lot smoother to work in. And uh, the issue that I experienced that proxies helped me with in addition to making this smoother, uh, and I will talk about that in a second when we enable proxies, now that I think about it. So we'll start a new project and do, we'll just call it proxies and color. Correction, there you go, because that's what we're going to talk about. And then we wanted to make sure that the setting in ingest settings is enabled. So enabled ingest. And there's a couple different options in here, but we're interested in create proxies. So I'll go ahead and enable that. And there's a couple different options as well for presets for what types of file that is. Uh, but to be very honest, I don't know why I would want ProRes versus DNxHR. Um, so I just stick with the default low resolution proxy for H. 264. And then the destination of the proxy is the same as the project. Okay, and then we're in, and then we'll go find a file that I want to work with. I remember the name of the file. So now we just got to make sure that we have a setting enabled inside Adobe Premiere itself. So that setting is underneath Edit, Preferences, Media. And then we just need to make sure that enable proxies is checked. And mine is, so we're good to go. So I will drag this in and then it will pop up and it has already popped up, but it'll pop up the media encoder and then you'll see it here encoding it. Uh, so while it's encoding, I'll talk about the issue I experienced. Uh, when I first started doing my video recording with my drone, I was just interested in getting videos up and available to people as soon as possible, with no editing, no music, nothing. Uh, but as time went on, I kind of got a little bit more ambitious with uh, editing and wanted to get a little fancier with it. Uh, so the first video I did that with was the snowfall video. I had multiple clips that I carved up out of all the different video footage I shot, and I started using transitions. And I was using a dip to black transition between clips. Uh, so when you put that in place, it just kind of dips black and then the next clip starts. And it's nice and it's smooth, but I found that uh, a crossfade dissolve looked a lot nicer where the two images kind of fade into each other from one clip to the next. And you see that a lot in movies and a lot in YouTube videos as well. Um, but I started having some issues where the second clip I was transitioning to would start to get really bad performance and it wouldn't play correctly. It'd start to jerk and freeze and pause and it wouldn't go away unless I took that transition away. Um, so I wrestled with that for a couple days and uh, then I started having some further problems um, and I got some video corruption, um, file corruption on the hard drive and it it wasn't great. And I don't know, it's a chicken and egg scenario. I don't know if the constant freezing was causing it in Adobe Premiere or if it was a problem with the hard drive itself. So I did end up returning the hard drive and I got a new one uh, and then started working on new video files. Um, but 
I started getting that same problem where I put a transition in place and then the second clip in the transition would start to jerk and freeze. And once bitten, twice shy, uh, terrified that I was gonna get corruption of video files again. So um, the last time it happened, I found proxies helped. So once I enabled proxies and started using, all my editing was being done to a low resolution proxy, um, then I didn't have that issue anymore. So that's the second benefit I found. And there may be just something that needs to be patched in Adobe Premiere, because I think version uh, 2022 came out really recently, uh, but whatever the case is, this gets me past that issue and plus it makes performance nicer. Um, so that's done now transcoding. So now the preview is being done using our lower resolution copy and so much smoother. It is like butter. It's so much nicer to work in it. Uh, and then that on top of the fact that I can use all the transitions I want without any issues. Um, so that is phenomenal. So uh, the other topic I want to talk about was the color correction. Um, so as you can see, I have a little bit too bright it doesn't look the best. I think some of the highlights are a little bit washed out. Um, and this is because on my phone, it's a very bright phone, it's a nice phone. However, its brightness cannot really compete with a sunny day. And I do have a hood that I put on it, um, but even that didn't really make it easy to see. So I think I turned the brightness up on the display in the, can the app, the DJ DJI Fly app. Um, and it made it easier to see, but I didn't realize that it was messing with the recording. Um, so I essentially just told it, hey, make this really bright. Uh, so, but we can adjust that now here in uh, Adobe Premiere. Um, so all we do is uh, select this and then click on color at the top. Uh, and then we are interested in basic correction. And in case it doesn't automatically go to basic correction, um, just you know click on basic correction so it expands it out. Uh, and then my issue is I think the highlights are a little bit overblown. Um, so we'll mess with exposure a little bit. Let's see, nah, I don't know, maybe not exposure. I think it's contrast. Yeah, pop up the contrast a little bit and then bring the highlights down a little bit and then the shadows a little darker. And then I think also the whites. No, the whites look okay. And the blacks too, a little bit darker look nice. And I'm just eyeballing this. I just, there's an auto button you can click that'll automatically adjust it, but I felt this made it just look a little nicer, pop a little bit more, look a little bit more true to true to life to me, to my eyes. Um, there's also a white balance selector you can use um, and it helps a little bit, but for what I was looking to accomplish, it didn't quite do what I wanted. Um, and then there's one other note that I wanted to talk about. Um, so when I did color correction in this video originally, it was back in the, the time frame of, I have one long clip and that's all I'm working with. Uh, but that's not really how normal video editing works. You generally have multiple clips and We'll do undo all my settings. So if we have two separate clips, so I'm gonna cut this clip in half. So I'm gonna use the razor tool and then click. And now we have two separate video clips. And if you click one, you can change its white balance and temperature and all the different color settings, but you can't do both at the same time. Even if you hold shift and left clicks, you highlight both, it won't let you do that. Um, but if you wanted to do multiple, you can still accomplish that by highlight both of them, right click and pick nest. And now this groups them together as a nice little nested sequence. And this might be um, useful for a logical grouping. So if you have like a title intro where you have some, um, a title card that comes up and some maybe parts of videos that are part of the title, um, you could group them together logically. Um, we're just gonna leave this the default name. Um, so now they're they're nested together and they're considered one chunk. So now if you select them, we can now do our color balance and changes again. Um, and for me, this would be super useful because like in that snowfall video, uh, all the clips were shot in one day, but they were cut up into multiple clips. So um, if I wanted to do a uh, adjustment across the board, I could do that by nesting them all together and then do my um, color adjustments and then unnest them. Um, but just wanted to make sure everybody knew that as well. Uh, so then, I want to add some music. So we'll talk quick about where I've been finding some really wonderful uh, royalty-free music to use on YouTube videos that won't get you copyright strikes. Um, so those are, uh, let's see, I had started off with using Stream Beats, and I think this is uh, Harris Heller's website, and he does a phenomenal job. I think he used the word phenomenal a lot. I think I'm gonna have to work on that. I'm also pretty hell-bent on not doing a lot of jump cuts in my videos. <laughs> So, uh, Harris Heller has a lot of great music out here. He does them in albums, uh, so you could come out and get an entire 
chiptune. I think there's a bunch of chiptune albums. Um, you can get hi-fi. I've been getting a lot of um, mileage out of the ambient album because uh, a lot of it seems to fit drone music. Um, and then also lo-fi has a lot of nice music in it as well. But you can come out here and click create and then download tracks and then it takes you out to a Google Drive and then you can download a zip file with all the WAV files and each of the different um, albums that you'd like to try. Uh, and then I believe he would just like it if you accredit him. Most, I think most of these free, royalty-free uh, websites are going to want you to uh, say music by and then say where you got the music from just so they get credit. Um, and that's not too big of a deal. I mean, they did the work, so may as well uh, give them the nod for that. And it's a pretty wonderful service they're offering. Um, and the next one is bensound.com. Um, been really enjoying this one. Uh, they have quite a few different types of music. Um, and I like it too because there's some longer tracks out here, which are nice because I think a lot of the ones in stream beats are a little bit shorter. And with a video that's a little longer, you might not find something that quite matches the length of a clip. Um, and there are options out here to purchase. Um, I think the more you dig into it, the more purchases ones there are, but there's a good amount of free ones for each of the different categories. Uh, plus there's a subscription off um, option as well that I may uh, consider doing if I end up really liking and using this a lot. And then last but not least, uh, Audionautics is pretty wonderful itself. There's a huge amount of different genres and then you can search as well uh, for different moods. So if you want to say, I want dark and bouncy and calming, you could search and get some music that meets that criteria. Um, and again, um, just make sure you provide credit. As long as you provide credit, it's cool to use even for commercial purposes uh, and not that big of a deal at all. Uh, so I have found a song to use for our particular video and we'll go find that right now. So go back to media browser and then I think I threw it in the music folder, albums, and then I think it got it from Audio Nautics. So we'll drag that on here. And then uh, one thing I do know about the music when I add it is it tends to be a little loud from any of the sources. And I've been wondering how that sounds to the viewers, but to me, it sounds real loud. Uh, so I've been just by default, right click on it, pick audio gain, and then you can either set the decibel level manually or you can adjust the gain by a set amount. And I've just been adjusting the gain about negative seven, um, but maybe I'll do a little bit higher this time just to see how it sounds, maybe negative 10.2 decibels. That drops that down a little bit and we'll listen again. See, the music's still there and it's not as overpowering and then the, the listener can reduce the volume if they need to. Um, and I also would like to do a little bit of a transition so that when the music starts up, uh, and then the video starts up, we'll have some nice transitions to just, like soften the beginning. Um, so I'm gonna put a uh, fade or dip to black, they call it, um, transition on the video. So if you go into effects and then click on the video, and then we're gonna look for video transitions, dissolve, and then dip to black. So if we drag that to the front of the video clip, it puts that transition there. And this is something I struggled with when I first started editing a couple weeks ago. Um, that transition is there, but I can't see it. And I'm used to using programs where you can zoom in. And it did not occur to me that this down here is not just a scroll bar, but it is also a, um, like, what's the way to put it? The scale? It's the scale at which you're looking. Um, so if I click and then drag it, it zooms in the scale. So now that we're zoomed in, you can see that this is just a single one second and that you can see that dip to black. Uh, and if you want to extend it, you can click it and then extend that dip to black so it fades in a little slower. Uh, but I think a one second dip looks nice. Uh, and then also uh, we're gonna add a transition for the music as well so that the music ramps up along with the dip around the same time frame. Uh, so we'll go into audio transitions crossfade and I've been liking constant gain because it is a linear up or a linear down depending on if it's in the beginning or the end of a clip um, and it just seems to work well for mixing or kind of blunting the beginning of something uh, so we'll drag that here so now we have a dip to black and a uh, constant gain so we'll start the clip oh yeah now I want to do my quick uh, color editing since we talked about it. I undid it just to show how nested work, but I never went back and did it. So I'm gonna bump up my contrast a little bit. I'm gonna bring 
highlights down a little bit, shadows down a little bit. And then whites, I think I could bring the whites, mm, maybe just a little bit because that sky is kind of overblown. And then the blacks a little bit just to darken it up. So let's try here again. Yeah. I like it. Um, but I also noticed that our song is not quite long enough to reach the end. Um, so either we could pick a different song that is quite long enough, or we could go find uh, a second song to mix in, which I thought would be fun for everybody to see. So we'll go in and grab a ambient track from uh, Harris Heller's Stream Beats. And I have one in particular that I like. I think it's Voxel. Voxel? Voxel Burbs. So we'll drag that in here. Um, and this one kind of tapers off. So I'm going to remove some of that tapering. And then match up the length of the new song to the end of my video. And then I want to mix these. I want one to fade and one to begin. And you're probably already remembering how that works. We go to effects, audio transitions, constant gain. And we'll put a constant gain on here. And then a constant gain on the other side of the new track as it starts. We'll zoom in a bit so we can see that transition. And then I'll make that longer because I want this to match. And we probably don't need that long of a of a mix a transition. Okay, and then we'll put our click here for our timeline. I think that works out great. I really like that a lot. Um, so that that accomplishes the two uh, tasks that I wanted to talk about to accomplish in Adobe Premiere, and then also touches on proxies and why I found them to be helpful. Um, there are some settings though um, to help manage your proxies. Um, oh, I'll have to go dig real quick. Let's let's go on a digging mission because there's some cleanup you can have Adobe do, and I don't remember if it's in Media Cache or if it's in Media. Oh, we'll check. Hmm, I think I'll end up doing another video and I'll touch on that. Maybe some settings uh, that are helpful. I don't want to spend a lot of time in the video just hunting, uh, but I also like the organic feel of videos where we're not doing a lot of jump cuts. So maybe I'll break myself of that habit, but so far I'm sticking with it. Uh, so let's see if I have any other parting words of wisdom for everybody. Uh... Well, I think that should pretty much cover it. I appreciate your time, and if you found this useful and enjoyed the content, um, please like, and then if you'd like to see more of this going forward as I release new videos, um, please consider subscribing. Uh, it helps me know that I'm providing content that people like. Uh, and then I really like hearing from the community. That's where these topics came from today. Uh, so if you have any questions or comments or like to see something in particular or have any tips for me, because uh, that's one of my hopes is that I can grow from uh, the community's knowledge as well. And uh, I understand that there's always tons of tutorials that you can watch or uh, training online training courses. Um, but my learning style is learning a technique and then using the technique consistently and learning more about it as I go. And then I add tool sets to my repertoire. And that's how my learning goes. And I like to stick with it. And it's been working pretty good. So if you have any tips and tricks, feel, f feel free to leave those on comments. Um, but otherwise, I appreciate your time. And I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it. So thank you and have a good night. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.